Right, so before we get started, I want to point out that you need to remove these four T20 Torx screws. Next thing, start to pry these clips off. So just get a uh, trim removal tool and begin to pry all these out. And it's two. And have something to put them in. I'm just going to use this. It was just sitting here. So use something like this. This I have a tool for this specifically. So I'll show you how it's done. Just come in underneath it and pry. It comes right up. You don't want to use it directly on your hard plastic bits because it will scratch it. That's why you use a plastic trim removal tool like this. There are ones on these hinges here, so be sure to remove them. And you'll see where all these are. Just uh, follow the trim all the way around and you'll see it all. Now with this done, we can now take this off. Don't just pull it off, it will break. There are clips behind here that you need to pry off. I'll show you guys in a second. Here's a close up of how you remove this. So this will sit over the top, you press it together and usually it just pops off. Same thing, press it together and it comes off. Then you can remove it. There's two off and now I can take this back. So if you look here, these clip on like this, over this so it supports it and holds it on. You need to press it together and then pry it out. That's how you remove this. Now we also need to remove this and to take this out. Press on the button up the top, slide it down. In order to remove this, don't make the same mistake I did. Pry it up on the bottom one. And we pry down on the top one. There we go. And now we're out. You can see here you have four. One, two, three, four. Top two you pry down, the bottom two you pry up. That's how you release it because you can see that there's tabs here. Let's make sure that all our other clips are off. Got one, two, three more total here. With that removed, we can now remove this. Alright. It just comes down. Now be careful because there is a LED bulb for this here, so we need to press on the tab and release it and there we go don't forget to remove this on this side once again you press on it and then you pull the back tab off press and pull that will release it and now this entire piece comes right off now once you've removed all this what you need to do now is remove this panel here so this can pop out you will not get this out unless you take off this panel here there are two torque screws here just make sure you remove them. So once you have this back carpet removed, what you need to do now is go inside here and remove two bolts from the boot latch, which opens up your boot. After that, it's just a matter of clips. So let me show you guys what I mean. This is your boot latch. And you see these two holes here? There were two T20 Torx screws inside here. You need to remove them because it screws into the rear panel that you need to remove, right? And then you have these clips. So you've got this here, you've got this here. You kind of pinch it together and then that will come out. Same with this clip here, you pinch it together. That one there needs to be pinched. And lastly, that one right there. Once you pinch all that, you need to pry as you pinch and then it will all come out. Now, don't be silly and think that you have to pry this chrome piece off because you definitely don't. It comes off in one piece. Let me show you. I'll close the boot. Right? And now, watch this. I've already pried everything down, so now all you do is pull down and release. Now, looking at this piece, you'll see that you have these clips. One, two, three of them. And then you have these here, which you press like that. Now, this is what you can remove in order to install the OEM style camera. Any of them. You can either use this or this. I would use this one because it's closest to the center, meaning your camera is closest to the center. Right? And that's how you remove this. You see how this has two screw holes right here? That's because the two screws that you had to remove screws directly into this you will not get this off unless you remove those two screws first then simply pinch on all of these as you're pulling down and it will come right off now i really wanted to stress here that this is the proper way to remove it 
I have seen another YouTuber remove it a different way and he completely pries it and breaks it. Do not do that. Now we can get to the license plate LED and replace it. With that removed, it really now is as simple as you just have to press on these two clips here, just like this, and then it will pop right out. I'm reaching inside right now and I'm just gonna push it right out and there you go, pops right out. To install your new ones, see the thick part of this, right? There's one side that's thin and then there's one side that's thick. You make sure the thick side is on the outside. That way your light angles towards your license plate, which is the point of it. And then if you don't happen to have these uh, rubber washers, make sure you remove them off your old one and then transfer them over. Then all you have to do now is simply push it straight in. Look how easily that clipped in. Look how nice that looks now too. Brand spanking new. All right, and then just install the other side and clip it in. Perfect, look at that. Reinstall everything back in. So as soon as you get that back in, the first thing that goes back on is this trim piece right here. Line up all your holes and simply push. Just push straight up. It will clip in. Make sure you hit it, the clip, because if it doesn't clip in, then it's not sitting in all the way. Here we go. See how it's not loose anymore? You don't want it to be loose. Next, we need to install, firstly, the two T20 Torx screws right next to the boot release handle. So it's on this side here. So we'll put them in. In this case, it's really helpful to have something like this. See how it's got a T20 bit on something like this and then I can just screw it in like that. That's gonna be so helpful. All right, so here are the two T20 Torx screws I'm just going to fit in. All right, and then just screw. See how this tool is so useful, guys? I love it. Now, you could always use a ratchet. That would be good too, but just get it in nice and snug and beautiful. Next, you want to plug it in. What we're going to do now is turn on the car, plug these in, and make sure they are not faulty. The last thing you want to do is put everything back together and then realize the LEDs are faulty. Don't do that. As you can see here, it is working. Both sides. So I plug that in, make sure you plug that in. Now these are reverse polarity, so you can just plug it in either way and it will work. If it doesn't, then just take it out and plug it in the other way and it should work. That's done. I'll show you guys how to put everything back together as well, so you're not confused as to how to put it all back. Next step would be to replace your carpet. Let's just get it on. Your handle here goes on the inside here. So coming from the bottom, you get it in now. Just line it up, that's it, see? Line it all up like this. Take your wire out there. Now grab your triangle holder and put it back in. You'll see the slots for it here. Just line it up like so and push and it will clip back in place. Grab your triangle, put it back in from the top, just like that and clip it closed. Put our sides back on, remember, Open up these first, okay? And this has to sit inside here, right? So lift it over the top and then slide it on in. You close it off, clip it back on. You heard those clips just then, I hope you did. Grab one of our trim clips and push it in here. Line up the hole and just push it in. Grab your other clips and start pushing all of them back in. This is what I mean, right? So make sure you pull these over, then you clip it over after. This is the way it goes on. Make sure you come underneath and then slide over the top. Grab your clips, put one in on this side here, there's always one there, and just follow the rest. Grab all your clips and put them all back in. Now, we have this one here. Don't forget to plug this back in first. So you have a light bulb here, follow how it lines up, plug it back in, make sure it works. And then just push it back on top. Now you can put back your clips on this side because it, go it goes on the outside, not the inside. So just get all your clips, push it back in. One here, here. There we go, and I think that's all of them guys. Now to just put back in the rest of our screws. One, two, three, four screws there. Line up your hole and... We have two more left. We're gonna use this again. 
and then we'll just make sure we push in as we tighten the last two screws just go in here tighten it down check make sure it's not loose after you tighten these two t20 torque screws and that's it now i just have to replace my license plate and that's how easy it is to replace your license plate led lights all right and then of course after you're done get some uh soapy water or whatever i've got these i always carry a bottle of a uh, quick detailer and all these fingerprint markings that you just put on let's take them all off eh? and we just want to wipe that down get all this off spray a decent amount because uh the more lubrication you have the less chance of you scratching anything use a nice clean side and just wipe it all down nice and clean and there you have it guys how to successfully replace the two license plate leds if you have to or the bulbs if you're not into these leds but personally i think these leds are so much brighter and they really do give your car that nice bright led license plate look rather than just having one single bulb it has a LED PCB board with at least 15 LEDs separate LED lights it just makes it that much brighter and a lot more appealing than the standard dull looking ones and as you can see also it's the cold white the cool white light not the yellowy orange light that you get with the standard ones and just before I leave I want to show you guys what else I also have planned for the channel and that is replacing the door buttons rather than using the adhesives that I used originally what I'm going to do is replace the buttons all together so that they look original not only that but I'll also be changing the controls for the door these are actual levers rather than the adhesive ones that I've used at the moment I'm going to install these so that I don't ever have to worry about the adhesive buttons coming off. These are going to be direct replacements for the seat adjusters. I really hope you found this video helpful guys and if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up and as always like, share, comment, subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.